All right, so surfaces. What are they? Now it's important that you understand these lectures because the questions are difficult. I have to say it again. And when I say it's difficult, I'm talking like a Ghanaian. So, okay, what I'm saying is that the questions are good. They are good questions. So I want you to understand it's important. You give the right answers. You don't just copy things and put it there, you see, because something like surface, if you Google it, you'll get some funny results. So don't, like I, I, I always beg you not to do, don't Google something that you have, we have told you in class that surfaces represent phenomena that have values at every point across its extent. You go and Google something else and give it to us. We are not going to accept it. It's okay. So understand it or just whatever you have been given, give it back. That's all. If you want to get an A, you read further, you read further. When you give a lecture, you have a group study, you try to get deeper into it and understand it. Phenomenon, what is a phenomenon? Something is phenomenal when it doesn't remain the same. If you like, it's it's interesting. It has a certain pattern to it. It kind of changes. It's not the same that you talk about a phenomenon. So an object in a phenomenon can't be the same. Let me just talk about a phenomenon. A phenomenon will be cloud formation. It's phenomenal. Are you okay? Um, so when you say a surface, you'll be thinking, so what is a surface? And um, you'll be touching something to find, okay, that's a surface. You thought the top of a table, uh, top of a cushion, you know, the, the floor. But why are we calling it a surface? That's going to be tricky. You know, for most people, it's going to look tricky for you. You're going to think, what exactly is special about it? Is that okay? And so, Surfaces represent phenomena that have values at every point across their extent. What does that mean? So you can see that that, that, that is heavy. Okay, so let's look at um, a gravel surface. Gravel surface. All right, but why do we call it that? We call it that because we find gravels there. It's okay, so if you were to map the area, an area with a lot of gravels, that means not everywhere is going to have gravels. So you're going to have some places to have gravels and you're going to have some places without it. Maybe some places you're going to have water. Some places you're going to have sand or clay or something. But you realize that you are actually trying to characterize that surface and to associate something, something that you found at those places okay now don't forget the topic this pro this subject the subject is geographic information systems there was a topic we dealt with called the raster model and i took my time and explained it i didn't we didn't rush through it at all and so everyone was through it not much questions asked that means class very happy lecturer very happy teacher very happy are you okay now it's based on that that this concept is being you know brought to you this afternoon a surface is a phenomenon that have values at every point across the system it's just like the raster model realize in the raster model we were capturing values to represent something that we found at that place at that coordinate is that okay so with a surface, every point across it has a value. And that value can be anything. The values are the infinite number. And so what that means is that when I give you a surface, at every point, there's some value, but we need to just figure out what it is. That's all. Are you okay? So I can create a temperature surface at every point, I'll have a value, a temperature value in degrees Celsius or Kelvin to find, to measure. Are you okay? There will be some value there. 
That's a temperature surface. Are you okay? All right, so the values at the infinite number of points across the surface are derived from a limited set of sample values. What this actually means, once you have samples, then you can, you can talk about deriving. Are you okay? So you, it means you really didn't or originally have values at certain places. But now by the definition of a surface, I should have values at every point across the extent of this surface, this the extent of the phenomenon. Okay. So there's been um, some kind of spillage of uh, chemical at a place in your community and everybody can smell it, it's everywhere. Okay, so if you had a way of just measuring everywhere this pollution, yeah, this this gas has reached, pick me, record it, pick me, record it, pick me, record it. You're recording only samples of this gas that has actually, you know, uh, diffused into the air, all right? Now with these values that you have picked, now you can go ahead and create a surface. In other words, you can derive new values for areas where you, were, you didn't go to. So that makes sense because we don't have time. You don't have the time. In fact, we have time to pound for food, cook some jollof and chicken, but we don't have time to be picking every single place on the earth. It is too vast. The earth is too big for us to do that. So it's only convenient that we pick only sample values. Pick only sample values. Okay, then we can derive. So this may be based on direct measurements. What are we talking about? So direct measurement is you going around and picking, like I guess the scenario I created. Um, there is some sort of uh, poly, I don't know, this is not, not pollution, uh, radioactive substance that has gotten into the system. Okay, there's an accident at a radioactive station, a place where, you know, people use radioactivity, uranium and stuff, people can generate electricity out of it. Let's assume that at one of these stations, there's an accident. Okay, and you need to now find out, you take your Guy Gamula counter, and then you are picking the GPS coordinates and you are recording the value in terms of what the radioactive substance and where it is. Radioactivity. Are you okay? So that's a direct measurement. Are you okay? But that will be checking the level of radioactive substance. I mean, how the intensity of it, all right? I think it's been a while since I talked about radioactivity anyway. But yes, there's a, there's a machine for doing that. That's directly measuring, directly measuring. So I'm saying when we are teaching, you take for granted, going to the exam, I ask you the same thing. Do you, how many ways you can you measure? People will be giving wrong answers. I don't know, the lecture people don't listen to when you speak, they don't listen, but it's okay. All right. so. High values, high value, how do you measure them? You use a total, you use total station or use a dumping level. But we all know the dumping level is the main thing. Okay. So you just measure, set it up, and then you someone moves and measure. Or use GPS. Go to the play, measure, go you measure, you go you measure. Then you get a location and the amount. The amount is the value. The amount is the value. Are you okay? Once you get the understanding, the rest, you just follow. Get the beginning, the first slide is the most important. All right, so you can also talk about temperature. I think I just talked about temperature. What do we use to measure temperature? You use some sort of thermometer. Okay. Yeah. Thermometer. Okay. Thermometer. Measure it. So you see the weather, weather forecast. When they are on TV, GTV, um, in fact, I've, I've always been following GT, but I stopped. I always want to see how they do their weather forecast. They did it the same way for a long time. And the visualization, there's something called visualization. In fact, it's not something called, everybody should know it. Anytime you are drawing a graph or you are just presenting something, you are we are visualizing it. Are you okay? So the more you make it, you, the, the more effective the visualization is, 
the better the communication of whatever it is. So when they want to talk about fog, IOK, fog patches, as they call them, the fog patches. And then there's mist, you know, and those things, you know, you, you should always remember one thing that they are only trying to predict. They're trying to make a prediction from some sample values that they have measured. Are you okay? Temperature is one of them. They always talk about temperature. It to be it to be cold, it's too slightly, and it will get dry. Then you're talking about humidity. Are you okay? This is like basic physics. That's why you need to be a science student to do, you know, engineering. So I believe I'm talking to people who are qualified. Temperature values for a temperature surface. Between these measured locations, values are assigned to the surface by interpolation. So interpolation is finding the unknown value between two known values. That is why interpolation is, even though I'm not saying, I'm assuming you know it. So you can also have extrapolation, but that's not what we are talking about here. Talk about interpolation. That means find the values in between the known values within a set of values. Are you okay? Services can also be mathematically derived from other data, such as slope, aspect surfaces derived from an elevation surface. Okay, so you can actually derive, yeah, you can have that derived data, you can have a slope, slope aspect, we talk about it, we talk about slope and aspect in this class, from an elevation surface. A surface of distance from bus stops in the city. That's an example. Okay. Can you imagine such a surface? How would it look like? The surface shows distances from bus stops. So let's talk about that. A surface in which the values that you find there are actually distances from bus stops. How, would it, how is it going to look like? So what is a surface? Let's, we have to just go back once again. So surfaces are simply phenomena that has values across its extent. In other words, something is happening. Okay, that's a phenomenon. Are you okay? And you can find within wherever that thing is happening, the extent of it, you can have a value everywhere you are. What does it mean? It means you're interested in bar stops and where I am from it. Can you imagine if that was, that was all that you needed in your life? That I'm always interested in where a bar stop is. Because of what I do, I, I'm in charge of bar stops. But are there bar stops? When I say bar stops, I think if you've lived in Ghana for a long time, what you should be thinking about is trotro, where the trotro stops. That's what we are talking about. And in where I am, okay, people say I shouldn't be saying I live closer to Medina. I should say that I live close to another place, but it's okay. Um, it's fine. No offense. I'm teaching. So you realize that here, people can make a queue to board a trotro. So that kind of environment is like a bus stop. Are you with me? All right. Or let's say if I were in charge of local government and there's a project to change this whole trotro thing, I may be interested in how far people are from bus stops. From trotro stops, are you with me? Or fair beer, airport first, airport second. We know these things, right? That's that's the name we give to our bar stops in Ghana. It's very special, unique to Ghana. All right. So, what would such a surface look like? So, I want the class to, I want to get interactive here. So, I'm going to go from one person to the other, and then you are going to give me your inputs. How would such a surface look like? Now. I want you to revisit the raster model. Picture the raster model and the way we explained it in class. Mm -hmm. A set of squares, grid squares, which have values and the values are attributes of the location where you are. Okay, in other words, we are talking about a picture. A picture of a particular area of interest. All right, so we are gonna start with Kofi, who I can see on my screen. Very clearly. So, Kofi, if someone give you a surface of distance from bar stops in Accra, or maybe a Nigerian, in, Kofi, you understand Nigerian. Kofi is a Ghanaian. 
in Ghana, in Accra, how will such a surface look like? So now you have two things to combine with, to combine. Combine the idea of modeling your world using spare gray cells. And Kofi, I hope you've been reading, even though you missed some lectures, I hope you've been reading about the things we did in the past. So you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know- I, 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 said, I, said in the, I joined the class last week. So. My own is it's a bad one. So we should forgive you. We should forgive you. We should forgive you. Not really. Not really. Going to the exam there, we can't forgive you. I know. I know. Okay. Okay. Let's move to Isaiah. Isaiah. How will such a surface look like? Yes, sir. Yes. Go go on and let's hear you. How would the surface of distance from bus stops? look like combining your knowledge in how raster models the concept of the raster model and then a surface the definition of what a surface is let's let's hear you this is just supposed to be interactive i'm not going to you know i just want to i want people to talk so whatever you say is fine okay Okay, let's take, let's take for instance, I'm talking about uh, a bus stop just at my junction to where I am now. Okay. Are you there? Yes, but I want you to go straight to the point. How would the surface look like? Yes. You have you have something like um, an image, an image which um, indicates the bus stop using the raster uh, model. And which has to do with my 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 megapixels, how good the image we present, and then we have which we store as boxes or small small boxes that looks with an a, a, a regular um, shape, and then considering the distance to my house, you use a line. Oh, okay, alive. okay, okay. So, so you see, the way you're answering the question isn't okay. Um, that's how I am. I just have to tell you that it's not the way you're supposed to answer the question. You need, so, to answer a question, the answer is in the question. Do you get it? So, you should use the words that we're using the question to answer it. So, if a question is asked properly, you can never get it wrong. So, the question is, how? Using your knowledge, okay, in the raster, what a raster model is, okay, and the definition of what a surface is, describe to me how distances to bar, a surface representing distances to bar stops will look like. That's the question. So you should not, your answer shouldn't digress too much. Yes. Next okay, person, sir. next person, James. James Isaiah. Sir. Yes. Go ahead. I just, I just answered the, the question. Hey, and so we have <laughs> two Isaiahs here. Yes. Yeah, that's the <laughs> My laptop is me like okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. Patrick, I'm going in the order that I have here. I think I'm going in alphabetical order or something. I don't know. No. I'm just going in a certain order. Yes, Patrick. Uh, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Patrick. Yeah, sir. Um the bus stops with with distances. I can they say that they are, the services will no. look like. No, no, J um, Patrick, look at it again. A surface of bus distance from distances bus distance from bus stops in the city. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sir, it will be it will be points and lines joined connected. Okay, listen, listen to the question again. With your knowledge in the of the raster model, okay, it means you are yeah. not here. It's good that I'm doing what I'm doing. 
if your knowledge in raster, you know what the raster model is. We spend a lot of time on it. Today, we are learning that surfaces are not what we think they are. They are actually phenomenon that has values everywhere. Are you okay? Example, we gave this height. Everywhere you go, you can have height there, isn't it? Yes, sir. Can you go to a place where there's no height? Are you not going to disappear? If there's no yes, height there, you are going to drop, isn't it? You, you drop into a bottomless yes, pit. Yes. 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 Yeah. Great. So we are saying that with the knowledge of what a surface is, like a temperature surface, it means everywhere there'll be some temperature, 32, 32, 32 everywhere you go on that surface, there is a value. Are you okay? Yeah. That is what we call a surface. Have, having that in mind, if you had a surface of distance from bar stops, what would that surface look like? Huh, sir. In fact, this, to be honest, you don't have uh, a clue. <laughs> uh, uh, sir, this one will raise up my hands, please. You raise up I my hands. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's fine, but it's not supposed to be that complicated. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, I, this okay, this um, Zunero, 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 um, Sadiq, 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 or Sadiq, I don't know, Sadiq, Zunero, so means he's not here. You see? So is he present or absent? He's absent, isn't he? Yeah, yeah? Maybe he may be going to urinate or something. For all you know. He's, <laughs> for all you know, he's eating for food on a diet on a di dining table. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe he's doing something, maybe. For all you know. Just don't want to be off the class. That's why I said. Yes. Maybe. Okay. That's true. Let's go back to the whiteboard. So bar stops means that there's a road, but forget about the road. I'm only using the road to make it look realistic. It's okay. Otherwise, I could have removed the road, the red lines, and then I'll put I'll just put the points. And the points represent the, the bar stops. So what it means is that I can actually, people are waiting here, are you getting that, to bother? It doesn't matter. Let me tell the truth. The answer to what a person asked you has nothing to do with all these green things, these lines I've drawn. They have nothing to do with it. It got something to do with the extent of the phenomenon. The extent of the, and what's the phenomenon? Bastos. And how I can reach them. Where am I? I have to be within a certain extent. So the word extent that we saw there, hmm? in the definition, I get that. It's always defined by a bounding box. Are you okay? By a bounding box. So this is the bounding box, some kind of rectangle. All right, which is actually defined by a minimum x coordinate, a minimum y coordinate, and a maximum x coordinate, and a maximum y coordinate. Anytime you have data like this, okay, you plotted it. It was plotted from x y coordinates, or it doesn't even matter. But bottom line is that I need to now determine, make sure that I have a value across this extent, it's English language I'm speaking here. I can't speak tree, but not everybody will understand tree. I want the value everywhere across this surface. I want the value, what's the value here? Anywhere randomly I pick this value. So everywhere, an infinite number of points across this surface should have a value. Do you get it? And what value is that? They should be distances from where I am. Are you okay? Or wherever I am. So wherever we are, where the question mark is, to a bus stop, what is my distance 
to a bus stop. So here is going to we we we're looking at the nearest bus stop. Are you okay? Approximately. So we can now consider that if I'm in the middle of this one somewhere in there, if I'm in the middle somewhere, then in that case, I'm somewhat to close to this bus stop or that bus stop. I get that. Okay. Now imagine I start moving everywhere and I will determine the distance to the nearest bus stop. And I will record it where I am. I'll be getting values everywhere. Let's assume I decide to move in a very systematic way and move from and divide the whole area into squares. Okay. I will also be generating a new raster model, a new raster model, a raster data structure, data structure that has a value in all the boxes. Are you getting that? Now, what does it mean? It means that, <clears throat> excuse me, I wouldn't be teaching you this if your the course wasn't titled application. So uh, we have to apply. Are you okay? That is why I don't think I'm making it difficult. That is, once you're applying, you have to you have to apply. So this area that we see up here, this this drawing up there, will now look more like this. A lot of squares, thousands of them millions of them are you okay with values at the intersection of rows and columns there will be there will be values there and what values these values will be distances from bar stops and so i would have generated a surface and this surface is represented as a raster. Surface of distance from bar stops in the city. Surfaces of surfaces showing concentration of criminal activity. Or probability of link, uh, lightning strikes. Okay, let's go for surfaces showing concentration of criminal activity. Um, that is not engineering, but let's still look at it. Mm. Yeah. Where crime is happening, it's not it's not engineering at all. The bus stop one is engineering. Let's say it's important for us to um, now make some analysis and decide where the next bus stop should be. I mean, like you never know. But with concentration of criminal activity, let's do it just for the understanding. Is that okay? But I won't ask you a question on criminal activity because the application is in civil engineering. So how will such a surface look like? Okay, so we're going to start again. Bakofi says we should take him out because he just joined last week. So um, if you want to miss a class, I'll advise you get the notes and uh, refresh. Is that okay? Because if I did a quiz okay, for you, if I had done a quiz, you'd be in trouble. So please, okay, yes, I don't want to be too strict on you. Like I would have even done a quiz right now which is not good. Anyway, so um, this time I'll go from the back. I won't start from, I see Patrick is the next person, but okay, I'll go to Isa again. Isa, based on my explanation of the surface of distances from bus stops, how would the surface showing concentration of criminal activity? You said? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Hello? Okay, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, um, putting uh, your explanation into consideration, it's it's almost it's the same thing, because but in this in this case we are not considering um, and let's say the whole area, the whole surface of the area, the whole area where we are, and the the concentration of criminal activities can be also represented as points and lines, as well. 
That's where no, the, no, the, Isaac, the criminal. I think, move, I, I, Isaac, I think you should move away from points and lines. Okay, and um, it should be because, represented by uh, by what? What are, well, let me show you something. Let me let me clarify something. It's good. The reason I asked you this question is so you, you understand. Please listen to me. Yeah. What you are seeing on the board and uh, this one. Yes. Yeah. These are not lines. There are some this is these are not lines. They are what? They are, they are pixels. Pixels, yeah. All these squares are pixels in the raster model. We use pixels. So don't forget that lecture. Don't forget the lectures. Discuss them. If you don't discuss me, I know it. Like by the back of my hand. You have to study, please. These are called pixels. So in class, I was trying to do this. Don't forget it. That's why we are talking. That's the best way to have values everywhere. The best way to have in fact, that's why I mentioned continuous data. Do you remember talking about continuous data? Continuous data means that everywhere you have a value. It's just the best way to put the surface is using the raster model. So that's why I'm saying that you can not say, I'll use lines and points to represent it. You won't be able to because a line, a line is discrete. If this is a line, this is it. If this is a point, this is it. It's discrete. It's limited in space. But once you are using the raster model to tessellate and cover the whole area with squares, and once you cover the whole area with squares, then it means everywhere you are, there is a square. Is that also? That's it. Exactly. So it can be points and lines. It has to okay. be, yes, it has to be a raster, raster. model. So most model. surfaces, the most effective way to it's using a raster model. Anyway, so I move to Sadiq. Are you back or you are still sleeping? So I'm I'm marking attendance in a way. Are you okay? By the end of this class, before we say goodbye, make sure I've marked you, so you can see that Sadiq has just connected and he's gone. Patrick, how will such a surface look like? Criminal activity. Uh, sir, with, with the explanation you made now on the thesis, the criminal activity also will be the same, but only that uh, it will not cover the whole area, but... No, 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 So, you see, it's good, but you see, we are learning. That's why I'm asking you this. That's, the best. Let's go back to the definition of a surface. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's look at it. Look at this definition away again. A surface represents what phenomenon that have values at every point across their extent. So there's got to be a value everywhere. Are you okay? There's got to be a, there's got to be a value everywhere. Okay. So we are going to have some sort of interpolation done. Remember, you just mentioned it here that between these measured locations, so you have to measure. You have to first know where the crime happened. Are you okay? And then where there's been no crime, on the surface that I'm going to show, are you okay? So the surface showing concentration of criminal activity. Even though there's not been an armed robbery in your house, you know very well that you are close. Isn't it? We are all Ghanaians. We live in Accra. Some of you have we've lived in cities. You know you are living in an area where it's like every day you are thinking, Charlie, go help me. Because you don't feel safe. That's because you are on the surface, but the value is not high. 
I, I want you to understand because when I ask you the question, you give me some funny answer. I'll be bored with you. Are you okay? So you can be on a survey, but the value may not be that high. So instead of you saying, 